In this video, we are going to solve an equation taken from part number 2001. For natural numbers a and n, solve the equation a to the power n plus 1 minus a plus 1 all to the power n equals 2001. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. As a and n are positive integers, we can take more some numbers on both sides to rule out some cases. And the question is, which number are we going to pick to do the mod operation? By using the mod operation, of course, we want to make the equation look simpler. Say some of the terms will vanish or reduce to a very simple number. As we are dealing with powers and the indices are also variables, the simplest things we can get are either 0, 1, or minus 1. To get these, we can try mod a or mod a plus 1. So let's see what will happen if we do uh, we take mod on these two numbers. The first case would be if we do mod a, then for the first term, in yellow, it will become 0 to the power n plus 1, which is 0, and then minus 1 to the power n, and that's actually 1, and that's congruent to 2001. We cannot do anything um, because we do, on 2001 because we do not know the value of a yet. So from this we can say that 0 minus 1 is congruent to 2001 mod a and so 2002 is congruent to 0 mod a we usually have um, um, the number next to mod to be some known integer but this time it's kind of reversed so uh, we say something differently which which is that um, a has to be a divisor of 2002 Now that's that's good to know because um, we can write 2002 into 2 times 7 times 11 times 13, a product of four distinct primes, and so there's there are only finitely many cases for a. Um, more importantly, we've managed to degenerate the problem into finitely many um, possibilities for a, and we can always try them one by one. So this makes our equation solvable. To obtain more information we can try mod a plus 1 as well. Now looking at the equation, we can see that for a, it will become minus 1, all to the power n plus 1, and then minus 0 is congruent to 2001. Again, there's nothing we can do at that side because we do not know the value of a. But uh, unfortunately, we cannot go any further from this because we have not known. Um, we don't know whether n is odd or even. If n is odd, then um, this power will be equal to one, or otherwise is equal to minus one. Apart from doing um, the mod operation to simplify the left hand side, we can also try to simplify the right hand side instead. Now we can do something on two thousand and one finally. A very obvious prime factor of 2001 is 3, so if we do mod 3, then right hand side will vanish. So let's try. If we do mod 3, then this time we cannot do anything on left hand side because we, again, we don't know the value of a. Now this is congruent to 0 mod 3. This looks like a very complicated equation, but actually we can already rule out many cases for a. In fact, we cannot have a to be either 0 mod 3, nor a to be congruent to minus 1 mod 3. Because for uh, if a is congruent to 0 mod 3, that means we'll have this term to vanish but the other term would not. So that means left hand side is not multiple of 3, but right hand side is, so um, the equation is not balanced. And similar thing happens when 
a is not congruent to my uh, a is congruent to minus one mod three, that will make um, the other term uh, be a multiple of three. But a to the n plus one now is not mod now then a to the power n plus one will not be multiple of three. So that means there's only one possible case if I were to take a mod three, which is that a must be congruent to one mod three. And so the equation becomes 1 to the power n plus 1 minus uh, 2 to the power n, and that's actually minus 1, or to the power n congruent to 0 mod 3. And simplifying, we have this. And that means minus 1 or to the power n must be congruent to 1 mod 3. Now from this, we can, we can deduce that n is even. And in fact, we've even solved um, our problem, our previous problem, which is that uh, we wanted to know the parity of n, and now we've managed to find it. So we can go back, go back to this equation. We'll put it back and see that. Minus 1, now because n is even, so n plus 1 is odd, so minus 1 to that power should have to be minus 1. So minus 1 equals 0, minus 0 is congruent to 2001, mod a plus 1. And 2002 is again congruent to 0, mod a plus 1. Now that means a plus 1 divides 2002 as well. Now we can actually solve A already because uh, we know that A is a divisor and A plus 1 has to be a divisor as well. And in fact, there are only, there's only one pair of consecutive integers both divided into 2002, which are 13 and 14 consecutive divisors. So that means a must be 13. Now the equation becomes 13 to the power n plus 1 minus 14 to the power of n equals 2001. We can try a few values of n and know that n equals 2 is the solution. And it's quite likely that there is no other solution because you can see that the values just keeps increasing and it goes very far away from 2001. If we want to show this, notice that we only um, we are only guessing that n equals two is the only solution, but we haven't proved it yet. If we want to show this, we should try what's going to happen when n is greater than or equal to three. To show that some equation has no solution, we usually try uh, mod some number. Of, well, of course, picking it wisely and show that both sides take distinct values. To pick the right number, we try to find a number, well, I mean in this case, we try to find a number that makes a to the power of n, the perfect power behaving very differently when n is larger than equal or equal to 3. A number that we can try will be 8, because it's 2 cubed, and if we try to mod 2 cubed, then things will behave differently when the index is greater than or equal to 3. For example, if the base is even, say 14 to the power of n in the equation, then it's actually congruent to minus 2 to the power n mod 8. Now when n is just 1 or 2, then it will be minus 2, and the next one will be minus 2 squared, and that's 4, mod 8. But starting from n equals 3, because we have um, at least 3 and 2 multiplying together, so that means 14 to the power of n must be multiple of 8. And 
as we keep multiplying by 14, uh, it, will still be it will still be multiple of 8. So starting from that power, all further powers will be congruent to 0 mod 8. And that's what I meant by behaving differently, because for the first two powers, it's non 0 mod 8, but for the other powers, all other powers starting from n is greater than or equal to 3, starting from n equals 3, we have these powers to be all congruent to 0 mod 8. So let's see whether this works. If we do mod 8, then the left hand side becomes minus 3 because 13 is congruent to minus 3 mod 8 to the power all to the power n plus 1 minus as explained just now is uh, congruent to 0 and then right hand side becomes 1 mod 8 obviously because uh, 2000 is a multiple of 8 notice that for this power minus 3 to the power n plus 1 it can only take well, the first is minus 3, and then the next one would be minus 3 squared, and that's 9, but we can rewrite that as 1. And because it's 1, so the next one, if we multiply by minus 3 again, we get minus 3. And we may notice that the sequence is periodic, it keeps repeating. And so we can only take minus 3 or 1. And so that means, again, um, the value it takes depends on the parity of n and so n plus 1 must be even because it's always the second term, the fourth term, sixth term, eighth term so that means even but we have actually already found out that n is even beforehand so that means we have a contradiction because n is even but from this we know that n has to be odd which means there is no solution when n is larger than or equal to 3 notice that we cannot do this we cannot try mod 8 when um, n is 1 equal to 1 or 2 because we will we then will not have this. We will not have this term to be congruent to 0 mod 8. So now it remains to check n equals 1 and 2 formally. And actually, we've done that before. So that means we can quickly conclude that n is equal to 2, a equals to 13. This is our final answer.